may be tonight when he comes again. Amen. The times and seasons are right for his appearing. Amen. He could come at any moment. The question is, are you ready? Amen. And if you've got loved ones, as I said this morning, that are not ready to meet the Lord, Amen. I tell you, now's the time to be. And that third verse, Brother Larry, didn't, uh, I was looking at it while we sing the song. It says, there'll be lament, that lamentation. Amen. That means weeping. Oh, how, how often have we wept for souls and cried out and called out on their behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to be praying that God would give us a harvest of souls. But for that to happen, we have to serve Him. Amen. We have to go outside these doors, for this is the place we come to worship. We come to magnify His holy name. A lot of people think that's all they have to do. But friends, you live outside in this world every day this every day of the week. Amen. We're around people every day. Amen. And I tell you what, we are, we are the greatest witnesses, amen, that Jesus Christ has on this earth. Amen. And I hope that they can see just a little bit of Jesus in me. Amen. I've got my cup turned over, Brother Charles. I've got my cup turned over tonight. Amen. And I hope that it gets full every night, starting tonight. Amen. So I say, like he said, when you go to the table and they've got the coffee cups turned over face down, you turn it over saying you want something to drink. Amen. That's what I'm saying. I want something to drink. Amen, and I and like Brother Ronnie said, when they when it was time to go to eating, and they said, "Come on, let's eat," he said, "I didn't d- diddle dilly dally, he was I was right there. I'm hungry, I'm hungry to hear from heaven." Amen. So let's hear a few songs tonight. Then we're gonna let Brother Key preach his heart out. Amen. All right, come ahead, Brother Jonathan, Miss Laura, come sing for us. Then I'm going to get Brother Dave and Stacy to sing. Then we're going to let Brother Keith preach. Amen. Hallelujah. You pray for them as they sing tonight. When I woke up this morning and saw a brand new day, I could feel the warmth of the Lord shine in my way. Although the clouds of darkness may hover over me, I will rise above each storm like an eagle. I'll be free. He said he would, he's taking care of me. I will not be troubled, I will trust in what he says. There's no need to be discouraged, for he can see ahead. If he watches over the sparrow, and he rules the earth and ground. How much more he loves me, what a comfort I have found. Cause he's taking care of me in ways that I cannot see. He's working it for my good, just like you said he would. He's taking care of me. Can't speak to a lame man yeah. saying, Rise up and walk. Don't you think that our God can do it again? Cause He's taking care of me in ways that I cannot see. He's working it for my good. 
it just like you said he would. He's taking care of me. Like Onesimus, I ran away, and I I guess guess I I thought I'd never pay for all my sin. Where would I begin? But then the hour came, and I was found. The law had come, and I was bound. I could not run. What would be done? Put that on my account is what the Savior said. Put that on my account and cancel all the debt. My sins were all so bad and great was their amount. But now I'm free and glad They're all on Christ's account Oh, how great the debt of sin I owe As I travel down life's weary road Unmindful of God's wondrous love Though He loves me still, though vile undone To pay my debt, he gave his son to die for me, and he set me free. But that's not all, there's even more than this. He's given to me his righteousness, all this for me, how can it be? Put that on my account. Is what the Savior said. Put that on my account and cancel all the debt. My sins were all so bad, and great was their amount. But now I'm free and glad they're all on Christ's account. Ah 
Amen. I'm his and he is mine. Amen. And no devil can change that for what happened on October 24th, 1993. Amen. It's, I guess the 24th was this past week and I'm 20 years old in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for 20 years that I've had the opportunity to serve Christ and thank God for each and every day of it. Amen. Come on, Keith. You just preach. Amen. I would say preach your guts out, but you already about did that already. Amen. I love Brother Keith. Amen. You pray for him He's, as he preaches to our hearts tonight. Give him a good hand. We love Brother Keith around these places. Amen. Good to be saved. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Appreciate you being here. I do want to say I appreciate all the prayers that's been prayed for us, the food. Uh, everything. Appreciate the church. Appreciate Brother Scotty the help uh, that you gave us. God's just good. Amen. Amen. And I was sitting in the hospital that night and I tried every way in the world, Brother Scotty, to tell him, say, that I, I can go preach. I had to preach that morning for Brother Evans. And I said, I need to go preach. And I said, I'll come back. And they said, No, you're not leaving. And uh, Casey said, No, you're not leaving. I want to say, Whose side you on? <laughs> Amen. And uh, so anyways, we are sitting there, and, and uh, these questions go through your mind. Yeah. And, and I'm glad the Holy Ghost was in that room, amen. amen? And I'll tell you what he said to me may not mean nothing to you, but it meant everything to me. And he said, Brother Dave, he said, I got this. Yeah. I said, praise God, yeah. work for me, yeah. amen? Yeah. And uh, I'm not worried about the outcome. Yeah. Uh, it's all in his hands, yeah. Amen. amen. And I do covet your prayers tonight. Still not 100%, and uh, still not as pretty as I once was, neither, amen. But that's going to 
That's going to get better one of these days, praise God. Amen. Uh, how many glad you saved tonight? Say amen. Well, praise God. Listen, I want you to stand for the reverence of the Word of God, the Gospel of Luke, the agnostic gospel of the Gospel of Luke, the penmanship of that great writer, that great doctor. Amen. And if there's ever day we need to hear from a doctor or a great physician, it's in this hour that we live. Amen. I wanted to preach something else. I wanted to preach on uh, such a man. Uh, but God just wouldn't let us get away from this. So we feel like this is the hour and the message God has for us tonight. I want to be a help to you and encouragement to you. Amen. We'll read the text and uh, we'll just use this for a kicking place or a springboard for the message. And we'll be referring to this for a little bit. And then we'll be going all over the Bible. Amen. So just preaching the word of God to you. How many excited about the days of revival? Amen. Amen. Now listen, revival, it's times of refreshing. Yeah. But if we ain't careful, we'll let this flesh wear us out. Yeah. Amen. And I know we got to work and we got to hustle and run here. And half of us have to eat in the car. And, yeah. and uh, half of us could probably eat out of the car. Yeah. If you got kids, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Yeah. You'll find a full course meal under the seats. Amen. <laughs> and uh, I guess after a few days, it's still good. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 5. Let's begin reading in verse number one. If you're there, say amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's good to be in the house of God. Amen. The Bible says in Luke chapter five and verse number one, and it came to pass. I've always wanted to preach that, never have been able to. Probably couldn't do it in the context of a, of a sermon. But anyways, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, to hear the word of God. Boy, we lack that in this day and this hour. I wish we'd get a hunger and a thirst. Like the dear pastor was talking about having just a hunger and a thirst. Not, not out of obligation or out of duty to come. I'm afraid that we've now gotten the routine, the mechanics of this thing. That we feel like, boy, we've done God our part. Boy, God ought to be pleased. We've done our little religious duty and we feel good about it. Listen, sometimes we feel guilty when we don't get to do it. Yeah. But matter of fact, it's not whether you're here or not. It's all about your heart condition. Yeah. Amen. God don't look on the outward, so oh, Brother McCosh. He looks on the inward part. Yeah. You can be here and be in His presence and still not be right with God. And don't make me preach on the woman that was crippled, that had the messed up spine. She was bent out of shape with God. And the Bible said she was in the house of God. There's a lot of folks that way tonight. They're been out of shape with God. Amen. And listen, the Bible says he, the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. All oh, that God would send a fresh word. And he said he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. That's the same Sea of Galilee. And he saw two ships standing by the lake. Now let me say this. Jesus is interested in bystanding things. And the Bible says, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into the one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust it out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. According to this text, you study it, Jesus used the, the surroundings as a microphone. He got out in the middle of that sea and began to I teach the people, never had to lift his voice because of the surroundings of the landscape. That water echoed just like an amphitheater to the people. The Word of God says he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Verse 4, are you still with me? Say amen. Now when he had left speaking, boy, that's a good thought. He said unto Simon, now get this, he's about to teach him a deeper lesson. Verse 3 he says, let's push out a little bit. But in verse, verse number 4 he says, now let's go, let's go ahead and launch on out. Let's go on a little bit deeper, amen? And he said, launch out into the deep. And notice what else he said. He said, let down your nets for drought. And Simon answered and said to him, now listen, here we are, master, I could hear that with a, a voice of doubt and confusion as if to say these very words. Lord, do you not understand? We've toiled all night. 
He said, we've wrestled the nets all night. We've gave it our all, Brother Dave. Paul, Peter was a fisherman. He knowed, he knowed how to fish. Somebody help me preach. Say amen. And the Word of God, he says, Master, we've toiled all night. Now get that. And we don't have nothing to show for it. He said, we've taken nothing. Ever feel like that? You ever feel like you're trying to do all you can for God? And seems like the more you put into the effort of doing the things of God, seems like you strike out. And you end up with nothing. I'm glad he's still the God of nothing. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to get to my text. Amen. He said, nevertheless, boy, I like that. Yeah. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had thus done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. Now get this. Yeah. And their net break. Yeah. And they beckoned to the partners, which was in the other ship, they said, Lord, help, we're in a mess of fish now. Amen. That they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships. And the Bible says, and they began to see. And when Simon Peter saw it, now notice this, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Boy, we need some of that business tonight. Amen. And the Bible says this, and for he was astonished. Boy, I like that. And all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which he had taken. And so was James and John and Zebedee. There's that inner circle, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch me in. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Look at verse 6, and I'll pray, and you can sit down just a minute. The Bible says, after they had let down the nets at the word of the Savior, the Bible says there was such a great multitude of fish. Notice the last part of that text, and their net break. I want to preach this thought tonight, if the Holy Ghost would help me. On the blessing of brokenness. Father, we thank you, God, for the grace of God. God, we thank you, Lord, for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for it, Brother Scotty, Lord, this precious church. I thank you, God, for what it means to me and my family. Uh, Father, they don't understand, God, this being a a, a facility and a place where I felt the glory of God. Uh, Lord, several times, and I've seen your hand, and uh, Lord, we've seen the miracles, God, that's come forth uh, out of this very sanctuary. Father, I thank you for them. I pray, oh God, tonight, may you open our hearts, may you uh, lay a spire before you tonight, God. uh, uh, Lord, we might be open before you tonight, yeah. Lord, for we know the Scripture says, I dear God, your eyes are open unto all yeah. things. I pray tonight that you would know us. Uh, God, you'd try us tonight, see if there be any wicked way in us. Yeah. I pray, oh Lord, tonight that you'd help us to be pliable in your hands. Help us to be sensitive to your spirit. Yeah. I pray, oh God, tonight may you have your will and way in the service. I bless the reading of thy word. Lord, yeah. it's not our word, nothing we can say or do tonight outside the moving and the working of the Holy Spirit of God. I pray tonight, may you uh, help us to lose sight of ourselves. I dear Lord, might just get a glimpse of you. Father, we ask you, Lord, to breathe on these people. I dear God, send revival this week. I know, Lord, it doesn't come through a man. Uh, but God, it starts with the condition of a heart tonight. I pray, God, you'd break us tonight, mold us and make us in your image. I do for this church this week, uh, God, your purpose and your plan. Have your blessed will and way. Uh, we'll never fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. Most of all, God, draw that sinner boy or girl, uh, that man or lady that's nearest hell. I pray, God, the Spirit of God would move them uh, to a place of conviction. Lord, Lord, that might be saved before it's everlasting too late. Again, we'll love you for it. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen, amen. and Amen. Thank you for standing in reverence to the Word of God. Amen? Very familiar story. Uh, Very familiar text. But may I say this before we go any further, and it may not mean a whole lot to you now, but it will when you see what I want to preach. Amen? 
By the way, I don't have an outline. I just have an inline tonight. Amen. I'd rather have an inline as to have any outline. Amen. So, Brother Scotty, I'm just going to shoot it from the hip. Amen. And in Luke's Gospel, chapter number 5, if you've been around your Bible any or studied the numbers of the Word of God, that number 5 stands for the goodness of God or the greatness or the grace of God. Amen. I'm faithful tonight for the grace of our blessed Lord. Amen. But here in Luke's Gospel, chapter number 5, uh, Jesus pins down here, the very right of the Luke's Gospel, pins down this story of a day in the life of the disciples, how that the Lord was about to do something great in their midst. Amen? Uh, may I say tonight, there's not a one of us here tonight that wasn't raise our hand and say, Preacher, I candidate that I want to see something yeah. great happen yeah. in my life. Yeah. Amen? If that be the case, you wouldn't be here. Amen? Yeah. But I believe tonight there's a desire, whether out of obligation, yeah. uh, maybe you didn't feel like cupping, but yeah. I'm telling you tonight, uh, God yeah. really wants to do something great. Amen? Yeah. I believe that with all my heart, Brother yeah. Ronnie. Yeah. And if we'll just make ourselves available... Yeah. And God will do the part that we cannot do. Amen. And so the word of God, just by way of introduction, we see it here. There's two ships standing there. And Jesus sees the vacancy of the ship. Amen. Now I say, first of all, boy, how we need to be vacant. Amen. I make ourselves available to be used in the Master's plan. Amen. And the Word of God simply shows us that there is a command from the Savior. And Jesus saw these ships and the people was thrown upon him. Uh, to hear the word of God, yeah. Jesus did not refuse to teach them yeah. about himself. Uh, Amen. And so he told Simon Peter, he said, Peter, if I could borrow your boat, Amen, and for just a few yeah. minutes, yeah. I'll do good with yeah. you. Amen. Yeah. And said, friend, he got in that ship yeah. and he said, hey, I thrust me out just yeah. a little. Amen. Yeah. And so we see the Savior's command. Right. He said, thrust me out. Amen. Amen. Right. And so Jesus began to I teach the people, if you would. And then the Bible says, And when he had finished speaking, then he turned to Simon again, and he said, Launch out into the deep. Amen. He said, Peter said, Listen, now I really want to show you something. He said, All these other people can't handle what I want to show to you. Amen. I May mean, I say tonight, don't get discouraged at those that ain't here and will not come, amen, because maybe they can't handle what God really wants to do, amen. And so in the text, uh, Jesus said, launch out into the deep, amen. And then we see the servants complain, amen. Still with me so far, say amen. And the Bible said in verse number five, he said, Simon answered and said, Master, we've toiled all night. Amen. He said, we've worked the waters. We've cast the nets. We've done everything in our ability. We've worked night and day. We're tired, Lord. We're weary in the flesh. Am I helping anybody? And we don't feel like pressing on. And we just feel like mending our nets and going back to the house. But Peter said this. He said, nevertheless, amen. He said, but in spite of all that, he said, I'll still cast the net, amen. I'm telling you, sometimes our faith gets weary and we get weak in this walk of life. But I'm telling you, thank God, when our faith doesn't get the job done, our obedience will. Amen. And so Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word, I'll cast the net. Amen. There's times, and you may be here tonight, you don't feel like doing nothing. Amen. I know in this hour, in this day, 
But if the devil can't get you to give him yeah. and to give up uh, and go on down the road, he'll get you yeah. just to get weary. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I've never seen a day and an hour where God's people's tired. Yeah. They're complacent yeah. and weary. Uh, I beat down the flesh. Yeah. I'm helping anybody. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, we're bearing burdens. And Wednesday night prayer list is longer than I've ever seen in our day. And some of it's our own fault, say amen. And I'm telling you, friend, God's people's burdened down and we're weary in the flesh and we've got hurt along the way and we've got offended along the way. Somebody help me now. And we don't feel like casting that. I'm telling you, Jesus said, if you'll just cast it at my word, I know your face weak, preacher, but praise God, just be obedient. I'll bless your obedience in spite of your faith. There's times, Brother Larry, I don't feel like I've got a lot of faith. But out of obligation, out of obedience, God blesses the obedience. Amen. That makes sense tonight. And the Word of God says, here it is. That, listen, He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I'll cast the net. I praise God. He just struck out a couple of hours ago. I mean, the worst fishing tournament I Peter had ever been in. Amen. Had the best Zebco I fishing pole. Praise God. And the plumb line, the sink of the whole nine yards. I rooster tails and at night crawlers say, man, I cast Catfish, I'm talking about it whole nine yards. Had the minnows, all that stuff, and all that garbage you fish with. I maybe even had a nine miller pistol. I just to shoot them when they got on top of the water. I don't know. I'm telling you, friend, old Peter said, I've struck out. But nevertheless, I'll cast the net. And the next verse says, hey, there was such a great multitude. Uh, Jesus, praise God, know where the fish was at in the water. Uh, why? Because he put the fish in the water. Amen. I tell you, friend, the word of God says he cast that net at the word of God. Not out of faith, but out of obedience. And God blessed the net. And he filled the net. And the word of God says that now. He went from the worst fishing of his life to the best time he had ever had. That's right. Good Amen. I'm telling you, the word of God says simply, here it was. That, listen, old Peter was discouraged. Yeah. Maybe you hear you said tonight. You don't understand how you come your life. It's flip-flop. You don't understand what God's doing. I just be honest. There's times in my life I don't understand what he's doing. But just out of obedience, amen. If I'll just keep walking the path. If I'll just keep praying the prayers. If I'll just stay by his hand. I tell you, praise God. He's got a plan. And he's got a purpose. I can't see it down the road. I'm telling you, friend, God knows the path. And he'll get to the end. And I'm telling you, friend, here it was. Oh, Peter, he said, Nevertheless, at thy word, I'll cast the net. Bear with me, look at this. First of all, I want you to see there was a washing. There was some that was washing their nets. That's a polishing. They was done with it. They had already fished. They was on the seashore and they said, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm telling you tonight, there's a lot of people are sitting in our Baptist churches and friend, they've got hurt and they've got their feelings hurt and they've had their emotions walked on. And man, they said, I'm done with it. I'm saved and that's all I want to be. And my family said, and I'm just done with it. I'm telling you, friend, if you stand on this and you perform on this platform, there's times in your life, Brother Scotty, you'll say, I just want to polish my nets. Yeah, right. When you work in the nursery, you get hurt. Yeah. Say amen. amen. And I'm talking about more ways than one. <laughs> amen. If you do any kind of service for God, you're going to get hurt. Listen. Are you listening to me? Listen. I'm telling you, friend, in the Word of God, they sat down, friend, they was polishing their nets. God, help us tonight. I'd listen to break out our nets again and say, hey, I may be hurt tonight. I'm telling you, friend, God's got something greater for me. 
I don't want to be found sitting on the sidelines. I want to pick up the net and cast it one more time. Number two, look at this. Notice the waters. The Bible says Jesus said to Simon, he said, thrust out a little. The first time he went out, he was in shallow water. Amen. Still had the anchor down, if you will. There's a lot of people ain't going to go too far with God as long as you're anchored in this world. Amen. I tell you, friend, there comes something in your life. Brother Scotty, I'm trying to get to my text that God doesn't just want to save you. And that's top priority tonight. He wants to have your vessel. He wants to pour what you've got. And he'll get inside of you. Amen. And you're that vessel tonight. And that Holy Ghost will take up residence. And you become the temple of a flash Holy God. I'm telling you, Scotty, it doesn't end up being saved. He says we've got to go on a little deep. And the word of God says he first thrust out a little. There's a lot of people content to be saved. And they never want to get no farther. Amen. This week I'm going to tell you what God's got designed. God wants to get us farther. Amen. God, I'm not talking about a church on down the road, a mega church. I'm talking about Brother Ronnie personally and spiritually in your life. A God wants to get in that deep part of your life and make something spiritual out of it. Does that make sense tonight? Notice lastly, and here's my point. You say, man, he's already done. No, I'm just getting started. Amen. Notice lastly, the weight. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Peter said, nevertheless, I'll cast the net. Yeah. And the Bible said there was such a great multitude. Is that King James preaching? Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm glad I ain't got an NIV Bible. Amen. 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 He said a great multitude. Amen. 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 So much that when they began to pull that net, Brother yeah. Scotty, yeah. And the Bible said that net break. Amen. First of all, notice something, if you will. In our life, I see two things. And this is what I want to deal with tonight. There's the blessing of the net. And praise God, we like that part. Say amen. We like it when God fills us up. We like this walking in and with our mouth open. And God just pouring handfuls on purpose. And blessing us because we don't deserve to be blessed. Ain't it good, children of God, just to show up and you've not done nothing all week, you've not prayed all week, and you've not studied all week, and you've not sought God all week, but yet you walk in the door, and God displaces anyhow, and you've not thought a thing about it, but God in His grace, He says, hey, I love you so much, even though you forgot me, I want to give you something. Amen. Hell yes, friend, He'll bless us. And there's times in our life that we leave just overflow. And we don't deserve it. Well, don't make me bog down and preach and get mean. Say amen. Some of us say it like God owes it to us. God doesn't owe us one red cent tonight. I told my daughter last night, I said, honey, I said, you know what you deserve? She said, yeah, daddy. I said, what is it? She said, I deserve to die and go to hell. I'm telling you, friend, we don't deserve his goodness. And Brother Charles, we don't deserve his blessing and his favor on us and watching over us and providing for us and fighting hell off of us. If God lifted the veil tonight just to see what we trampled over to get down to the house of God tonight, I tell you, we wouldn't sit in our life, wouldn't an idiot. We'd jump pews and shout and say, hey, God's been good to us. Amen. Amen. We like that blessing part. Amen. We like it when everything's going good. 
We like it when the birds are singing, amen. And the high places are brought low and the crooked paths are... Oh, we like it, Brother Dave, when we can see how God works clearly. And we like it when we're on His trail. And we like it when we're on His path. And we like it when we can feel God nod your head. And we like it when the preacher's hooked up. And we like it when the singing's right. And I'm telling you, friend, there's times in your life that sometimes in order to get the blessings, God's got to break us. Everybody all right? We like that blessing part. And God will give you blessings, but to get the real blessing, you got to be broke. <laughs> I want to preach tonight on the blessing of brokenness. Oh, I appreciate the goodness of God. I appreciate being a young Christian and I prayed ignorantly and God answered prayers that probably he wouldn't normally answer, but he knew me and he knew who I was. He might understand that. And he knew I didn't understand everything. And God just worked anyhow in spite of me. But now that you say, God says, hey, in order to get to that deep part where the multitude's at, where the goodies is at, I've got to break something. Boy, we don't like that part. And I'm telling you things in our life, sometimes that breaking, amen, it's a blessing in disguise, amen. I'm telling you, friend, God, help us. Uh, listen, man, I say we never break something. Uh, well, listen, we never break something that we find a blessing to us, do we? Amen. I mean, listen, if you've got something in your home and your life, that's a real blessing to you. You're not just going to jump up and break that blessing, are you? Amen? I'm telling you, friend, there's blessings in our life that sometimes we accidentally break. Or when we do break things that we own, we break them because they're no more value to us. Or they have no more use to us. Oh, God, help us. I feel so much preach. I'm trying to behave. Amen. Casey said, don't hurt yourself, but I'm about to. Amen. I tell you, friend, God, help us. We're so blessed tonight. Say amen. And we pray God bless America. He's already blessed us more than what we need. That's what's wrong. Our blessers already broke. And we forgot our creator. And we worship creation more than we do the creator. Say amen. I tell you, friend, God help us. But when we break them blessings, it's because we found something better. Or it doesn't serve a purpose anymore. And I tell you, in the economy of God, it doesn't work that way. God doesn't break us on accident. Look up here. I'm trying to help somebody. God doesn't break you because you don't have value to Him. Woo! Anymore. Amen. It's not because you're not useful no more. But I'm telling you, praise God, there's something on the inside of you, Brother Dave, that the only way God can get that out of you is not by blessing you, but it's by breaking you. Amen. 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 And I'm telling you, friend, in our lives, sometimes we don't understand what's going on. Amen. But thank God He knows where we're at. Amen. God's always had a purpose. Amen. Maybe tonight you're discouraged and defeated and feel like quitting. Amen. May I remind you God's not left you out. God has a plan and God has a purpose and God has a procedure and God knows exactly your frame and He knows how to get the best out of you. Say amen. I'm telling you, sometimes we don't understand that. I'm telling you, praise God, God has a purpose and He has a procedure and that process, that process and procedure uh, sometimes it's always, sometimes it's handfuls on purpose and Sometimes it's a procedure or a process of blessing. And sometimes that process that he works with, it's a process of brokenness. Does that make sense? In order to get that good part out of us, Scotty, we don't like it, but God has to break us. <laughs> you say, preacher, you got scripture. I'm glad you asked. Amen. 
I tell you, friend, God help us. If you will, turn right fast tonight. Let me hear your Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, I, Paul put it like this. He said, when I come to you, he said, I hear that there be divisions among you. Amen. And he said, I partly believe it, but look at verse 19 in 1 Corinthians 11. He said, for these, uh, for there must be also. Now I tell you, thank God, he says, hey, he said, there must be also heresies that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Hey, Paul said it like this. I know there's some things and I know we're living in a day where there's church divisions and there's splits and there's bust ups. I'm telling you, there's some people sitting in our churches. Brother Scott, if God didn't do the weeding process, I know this ain't popular preaching. I'm trying to help you church tonight. Sometimes we think, well, I, listen, some, we don't like flat. Yeah. We don't like it when it gets tough. Yeah. And we don't like it when it gets quiet. Yeah. And we don't like it when it wasn't like it was a few months ago. And I don't know what it was like a few months ago, but I've got a pretty good idea, amen? And sometimes we go through those drought seasons and we go through those hurtful times and we'll let our mind get discouraged. Am I preaching tonight? I tell you, friend, in our lives sometimes we'll see the brokenness that God's doing and we'll say, I don't understand, but know what God's are doing. It's for your good and for His glory. Amen. You'll find it here is in this verse. In 1 Corinthians 11, Paul said, he said it must happen. Because brother Scotty, sometimes those that we always push and let take part in the service, you know there's others out there sitting on the pew that God has a great work in store for them. But as long as somebody else is up doing it all the time, God, somebody help me now. Am I making sense? Sometimes God has to break us and change us and shake us a little bit so something will be made public. That's what it said in verse 19. He said there's others approved among you that can do just as much because, Scotty, it just ain't you, son, that I've done a work in. There's somebody out here that I've touched and they've got a work inside of them and I can't get it out of them until I break something. I've lost half of it, but I've got to preach it anyhow. I tell you, friend, listen, it's the blessing in brokenness. Thank God for the seasons of fullness. Amen. But God help us not to complain against the hand of brokenness. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, God, I saw this and I'd made mention to it to you the other day. I've not preached it, but I did preach out of Genesis 1. How that God in those first three days, everything that God was doing, Brother Lion. And the Bible said, listen, he made the earth in six little days. You believe that? Say amen. amen. I don't believe in a gap theory or a day age theory. I believe in a sovereign God, say amen, whose name is Elohim, which simply means he's a plural God. Thank God that yet he's one. He's one all in himself, but he's three in one. <laughs> amen. And the Bible said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Amen. And the listen, the Bible goes on to talk about that. Listen, he said, let there be a, a division or a separation between the day and the night. Amen. The darkness and the light. And so God divided it. Well, the second day, God divided something else. The Bible said that he divided the firmament. And so he put an atmosphere of water between the first heaven and the second heaven. And I believe personally there's another water vapor between the second heaven where the birds dwell and the third heaven where Apostle Paul said I was caught up to the third heaven. That's the glory world. And those firmaments are separating the heavens. And so God divided and the Bible said that was the second day. On the third day, God was still dividing things. 
You're not three verses into the first book of the Bible and God's dividing everything He's made. Yeah. If you've got a problem with separation, you might as well throw away your Bible because God's separating some things. Amen? And so he separated the waters from the land and it was not to the fourth day that when he said brought forth the tree and said for it to multiply. And man, yeah, man, that's right. God's process is always division before multiplication. Yeah, amen. That's right. Amen. Am I helping anybody? In our economy, what do we learn first? Multiplication. And then division. But not in the economy of God. God says in order to be multiplied to bring forth fruit. (laughs) I've got to divide something. That word divide means rip to pieces. It means to be torn from top to bottom. Yeah. Amen. And Jesus said in John 12, 24, He said, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die to itself. He said, it died to itself. There's no lie. Paraphrasing. He said, but if that corn of wheat fall to the ground and that hole, that corn be broke open, then life can come for it. I'm telling you, praise God. Jesus died on the cross. That corn of wheat fell on the cross called Calvary. And God divided something from the top to the bottom. And he rent the veil and divided himself. Amen. And therefore, multiplication come through the Son of God who became the Son of Man. The sons of men through the Son of God might become the sons of God. Amen. Am I making sense tonight? Sometimes God has to divide us. Now I'm not talking about go out tonight and say, hey, Brother Keith's provoking a church split. God, help us tonight. You've got to be crazy. We're endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. And I'm telling you, in your life sometimes, Brother Ronnie, God has to break you. God has to tear us to pieces. Can I show you three, four, maybe seven (laughs) things tonight in the Word of God? First of all, notice in the text tonight, Simon Peter had to sink before he could see. (laughs) The Word of God says that when he took on them fish, there was such a multitude, he cried for the other boys that, hey, I can't handle what God's doing. (laughs) He said, this thing's multiplied on me. He said, I'm already, my my net's broke. What I have is broke. In the hands of God, I'm broke. And this thing's multiplied. And I need some help. And he beckoned for them to come. I'm telling you, old Peter shouted and said, hey, boys, I need your boats. I need your nets. I'm up to fish up to my ears. Amen. 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 And the word of God says, and boys got over there. And the Bible says they filled the other ship, filled both ships, verse 7. And what does it say? And they began to sink. Amen. And the next verse says, as soon as Peter saw what was going on, he fell down at Jesus' knees. And he said, depart from me. For I am a sinful man. I tell you, number one tonight, Peter had to sink before he could see. Amen. What do you mean, preacher? This is the first confession of Peter as a sinful man in the Word of God. I don't know about you tonight. I remember the night, Brother Larry, I praise God, the Holy Ghost put me under conviction. I had to hit rock bottom, had to come to the end of myself and my resources, and I was beyond help. I was seeking fast in the mire of sin and the clutches of hell. But when I started seeking, I'm glad the Holy Ghost lifted up the Son of God through old flesh and preaching of the Word of God, and I saw Him, and I reached up by faith. I'll tell you, praise God, it'll take seeking in your life. It'll take you to realize tonight you can't do it and you're going down and there's no hope and the only way is to see him. 
<laughs> I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't trade what I went through this week to experience what I felt last night. And yet some of you in the prayer room know what I'm talking about. Sometimes, Brother Scotty, you've got to go through low places <laughs> to make you appreciate the high places. <laughs> hey, man, am I helping anybody tonight? Somebody looking at me like he's done lost me. Well, just hang on. I'll be done. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, God, help us. That's our problem tonight. We're so independent. And we so much think we can do this thing on our own tonight. I've got news for you, church. I've got news for you, child of God. Uh, sometimes God will let you sink. Amen. Amen. Uh, just so you can see him. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, friends, sometimes God has to break us in order where we'll trust Him more. There's much more I can say. I think about Peter again when he was in another ship and the storm come that night. And Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me come to you. And Jesus said, come. And Peter stepped out on them by faith and obedience. <laughs> And his faith failed him right fast, didn't it? And he said, Lord, save me. Amen. Amen. And he couldn't see Jesus because of the waves. But when he started sinking, he saw him, didn't he? I'm telling you, friend, God, tonight, sometimes God has to humble us before we realize that who he is. Amen. Amen. Number two, let me move on hurry. I don't want to keep you all night. I want you to get a good night's rest so you can come back all week. Say amen. Amen. Notice number two. If Peter was seeking to see the Lord, it's about his soul. Brother Scotty, if it's going to get somebody saved, I'm willing to get low. Think about that. Think about that. I think about another story. I was going on. I think about another story. Them four men come carrying, bearing that man on that sick bed. And the Bible said they went to that house and they couldn't get in because of the press, because it was noise. <laughs> A brawl that Jesus was in the house. I'm in the Bible. And the word of God says they, they couldn't get in. The Bible says they went up on the house top and they began to peel off the shingles. I know a little bit of that business. And said they tore off the room and they began to lower that man down in the presence of God. And the Bible said when Jesus looked up and he saw their faith that he told the sick man, Arise and take up thy bed. Hmm. But I didn't find the story. Nobody run out tell, run outside and say, "Hey, hold up! This ain't your house. You ain't allowed to tear off my roof." Maybe them men already looked at each other and said, "Hey, it might cost us every red dime we've ever worked for him, but if it costs us everything just to get him, just to get him down at the feet of Jesus." That one man said, hey, I'm willing to pay the price tonight. I want to know, church, is it really in your gut? Is it really in your heart to throw up your hands and say, hey, I'm willing to get low tonight. I'm willing to take upon myself the form of a servant and be made mockery and ridicule and take mud on me so that some sinner might be put in his presence. See, we put a limitation on it. <laughs> we can't drive the bus that far. <laughs> Somebody help me now. Gas is too high. Praise God. I think now they're bootlegging again out in Gatlinburg. Surely we can figure out how to put that in the cars again. Amen. <laughs> Might be a help, brother, if you'll find somebody that's got some of that tonight. <laughs> Amen. He said he needs some gas. Some of you bootleggers are to give him some. Amen. I wonder tonight, hey, some of us so full of self-love. We're so afraid of taking a little mud sling in our way. We're so afraid of making a name for ourselves and being right in front of everybody else. Apostle Paul said, hey, 
have become what they are, that I might win them to Christ. God, help Broadview Baptist Church tonight. If it takes this community, say, hey, they're nothing but holy rollers and heretics and Pharisees and legalizers. Come hell or high water. I want to see somebody get saved. Amen. 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 Number two, I'm moving on. Say amen. Number two, if it took the seek and the seeing, number two, it takes sift and the strengthen. In Luke 22, Peter again is on the sea. And the Bible said, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, Simon. Anytime the Lord says something twice, you better perk up them ears. He said, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for an encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we like it when your pastor or somebody like me comes in and says, Hey, God's going to break you all to pieces. Uh, yeah. Woo! Hey. And everybody's going to run out tonight and say, Praise God, that's a good start to revival. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, if you're going to launch out in deep, God's got to get that good yeah. part out of it. He's got to break you. Because yeah. there's something inside of you that He can't get out unless He breaks you. Amen. <laughs> what about that alabaster box? It had to be broke in order for that perfume to get out. Amen? And the Bible said, Jesus said to Simon, 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 Satan desired to sift you like we'd have me know what a sifter is. Few of you do. You look at me like, how do you know? Well, Mamaw used to have one. Praise God. I stayed in the kitchen with Mamaw. Amen? I, I remember some of them flyer. I remember from them flyer bags. Didn't they come? Didn't they come tied at the top and you pulled the cord? Yeah. Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. Some of you don't even know what biscuits are. You hit that tube and it goes. Pff. I'm talking about real, real stuff to cook with. Say amen. <laughs> Back in the day, they'd get that, that. They'd take that. They'd take that. <laughs> A scoop of that flour or meal to make biscuits yeah. out of. Right, okay, some of us don't, some of us ought to be educated in biscuits. <laughs> and uh, they'd take that flour, that meal, and they'd pour it in that sifter, and that sifter's like a stream that had a metal. The one memo, it had a cracker, and it go whoop a whoop a whoop a whoop. Yeah. What it was doing, there was some impurities. Yeah. Inside that flour. <laughs> and in order to make a cake or some cat head biscuits without the impurities, it had to endure the sifting. Yeah. Because them impurities would make it taste bad. And it wouldn't look good. Say amen. amen. And the product wouldn't turn out like it ought to. Amen. And so it had to be sifted to get the impurities out. Amen. And the flour would fall through in order to make a cake. And inside that sifter would be the impurities. And Jesus said, it, hey, it's necessary for you. It's good for you. If you're going to be anything for me, you've got to go through it. Anybody feel like running? <laughs> huh? Peter said, oh, Lord. He said, Satan's desired to sift you like wheat. And he did. I tell you, Peter even got to the point, I know it's bad as because the end of a night, he is cussing up a storm. Yeah. Yeah. Say amen. I've seen some of us out in town with our stickers on our back car. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. Yeah. Under our breath, we may not say it, but we sure are giving a good. Yeah. 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 No, Peter's being sifted by the devil. And Jesus said, but know this, I'm praying for you. And when thou art converted, didn't say regenerated. Regeneration happens one time in a man. But conversion happens several times in a man. You get saved one time and that's good as done. Say amen. But the Bible says when thou art converted means turn back. Peter, you're going to backslide on me. And when you get through, I'm going to turn you back. Amen. And when you get through it, then go and strengthen the bread. Amen. See, there's people here tonight. 
We really don't know how to pray for people because we've never been sifted like they've sifted. But in order for you to become what God wants you to and to get that good part out of you, he's got to sift you. Does that make sense tonight? And I'm telling you, friend, he had to sift him because the sifting's for the saints to strengthen the brethren. How do I know, Brother Larry, he'll do it for you? Because I've been up them rocky roads. I've climbed across some of them rocky crags. I've went down the path where I thought should have been smooth and it should have been. We're so used to the paid pathway. God, help us tonight to understand God doesn't lead you in the way of smooth riding, but God will lead you along the rocky way. Abraham, Abraham, a man of faith, the father of our faith. It wasn't just a few chapters in his life. And God started putting stumbling stones in his way. (laughs) All through his life in order for Abram to become Abraham. When he got to those places in his life. And there was a boulder if you would in the path. He didn't resist it. And he didn't get quit quit like the 21st century Christian would. For the past block we might as well go back. See, God ain't going to get that good part out of you. Because I'm going to tell you, if you're going to get any higher, you've got to use them rocks that's in the path to become stepping stones. And every time you take a step, you get a little higher with God. And the higher you go. Do you know where the word mediocre comes from? It's a real city and a village where skiers and hikers, I don't remember where the town was, this is where it comes. They used to go to a place, and halfway up the mountain, they used to stop and make camp. And on the side of that mountain, after all the years, the men of that town said, Hey, since we're going to do this, we might as well make money off the people that stop it and camp. So they made a city halfway up to that summit. And it's called the city of mediocrity. And so now everybody stops because most people ain't willing to go on to the top because they're content being in mediocrity. And they stop and what happens is they get so far up the mountain and they look out over it and they say, you know what, that's a pretty good view. Everything looks all right from here. I can see the top of the mountain. Man, it's pretty, it's nice. Brother Scotty, I've learned my life very few will pack up and go on up the mountaintop to get the full experience in their life. I'm telling you, so many of us Christians, we sell said, hey, the view's nice here, and Brother Dave's here with me. Ain't nobody else going up. I'm just as high as they are. I'm doing all right. But I have found this out. If you pack up, And you leave camp and say, hey, I'm not content with staying here. But I've got to go further. And you set out on that voyage to climb that peak to get God and all His glory. I'm going to tell you, there ain't going to be many other campers go with you. I've learned as a pastor, Brother Scotty, sometimes your church don't want to go. (laughs) I've found out as an individual, sometimes your family members don't want to go. And I'm going to tell you, in order for you to see God like you need to see God, we better get past that place of mediocrity. Amen? Have me want to see His glory. I'm telling you, listen, that Moses was the only one, him and Joshua, ever got to go up on that mountain of thunderings and lightnings. Well, because the people was content to being down there in the middle. God help us tonight to get over being content and say, hey, I want to go see his glory. And so he was sifted. Number three, and I'm done. Look at this. We got to be softened to serve. Job 19, Job said this. He breaketh me to pieces. Job 23, he said, he maketh my heart soft and troubles follow me. Paraphrasing it. Job said, my God, 
what did I do to deserve this? And Job was bucking against what God was doing. <laughs> Job lost everything he had. And his wife was about to leave him. She said, this cursed God and I, Job. And Job said, not so. You speak as a foolish woman. Didn't call her a foolish woman, but he said, you speak as. It'd be good counsel tonight for some of us men not to call your wife foolish. She might act foolish, but she's not foolish. That's when you nod your head right there. Say amen. <laughs> amen. I'm telling you, friend, he said, you're speaking like the women of the town. Not like a woman of faith. And he said, I came to him stay naked. I'll return back to him naked. God has given and God has taken away. But blessed be the name of God. And the Bible said every trial, every faith. And the Bible says, and then came another. And then all that happened within a 24-hour period. The Bible said Job took a piece of pot shirt. Guess what that pot shirt is? It's a piece of earthen earthen vessel that was broke. His life was broke. And the Bible said he sat down among the ashes and he worshipped. Yeah. Uh, hang on now, I've got a question. Where did them ashes come from? Mm-hmm. Them ashes come from the other sacrifices yeah. Yeah. that he had given to God. Yeah. I tell you, praise God, there's times in your life, Brother Scotty, you won't understand what God's doing in your life. I'm telling you, praise God, just go back and glean off the other blessings and shout on credit. I tell you, there's a worship inside of all of us and God has to break us every now and then so we'll get beside ourselves and say, hey, I don't give a real push here. God's been good to me and I want to give a sacrifice of praise. And he sat down among the ashes and he worshiped. Amen. Can I close like this tonight? And there's much more I could say. Second Corinthians, turn that right fast. Second Corinthians, I believe it's chapter number four. And this is where, this is where it's all come to. Second Corinthians four, verse seven. When you get there, say amen. amen. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Hang on. There's a treasure in the earthen vessel. What's Paul saying? Inside of you, there's a treasure. And God's after your treasure box. (laughs) I feel like running. He said that the excellency of the power which is dunamis may be of God and not of us. We're troubled on every side yet not distressed. He said, we're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life, here it is, also of Jesus, might be made manifest in our body. Verse 16 says, For which cause we faint not, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction was bent for a moment, working for us a far more and exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. I tell you, friend, you may not understand what God's are doing in your life, but God's got a treasure. And in order to get that treasure out of you, He's got to break you. Amen. I close with this. In Judges chapter number 7, Gideon was commanded by God to go fight them Amalekites. And he said, I want you to choose out 300 men. And he said, you take them down. And he said, you find out how they lap up the water. And those that lapped it up like a dog, he sent them back to the house. And he said, those that bent down and brought the water to them, he said, that's the ones I choose. And Gideon said, the rest of you cowards, go into the house. We don't need you. Go put on your cooking apron and make biscuits. Say amen. Amen. He said, us men's going to fight. And the Bible says Gideon equipped them with something. 
What did he give them, Pastor? He gave them a trumpet. And guess what else he gave them? He gave them a jar of clay, a vessel. And in that vessel, he put a light, a torch. They put that clay vessel over that torch that was burning. That night, your Bible says in, Gen in Judges 7, that the Midianites and those boys was laid out like grasshoppers in the valley. And the Israelites were so afraid of their life, but God already promised the victory. Are you listening to me? And the Bible said Gideon and camped around about them 300 men and kept around about that little camp. And Gideon said, <laughs> Gideon said this, watch me, boys. He said, whatever you see me do, you do it also. And the Bible said when Gideon stood up and shouted and blowed the trumpet, the Bible said he broke the vessel and the light came forth. Are you getting that, friend? There's a life inside of you. It's more than being saved. It's a joy to be saved. But in order to have that life, God doesn't just want you to have that life. He's got to get that life out of you. God saves us and puts life in us. And then he brings that life forth and brings it out of us so others may see that light in you that they may see the good works of God. What good works? That breaking part. See, them tears are a language. A lot of times you say, hey, people don't understand. You'll be surprised of how you're ministering to somebody else because yeah. God's breaking your life. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, God gave them the victory because they held up that life. Amen. Amen. That vessel had to be broke. Yes, now, I'm going to tell you tonight, there's somebody here, and maybe, 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 and I've had to repent, Scotty, Sometimes in my own life, and my own ministry, I complain about what God's doing. And we don't understand what kind of eternal value that has. If I'd learned to be like the Apostle Paul, I'd be content in whatever state I'm in. Now, I know it's hard. And I'm not going to stand up here and say, hey, we all ought to shout because God's breaking us. Hey, it's not fun being broke. You did hear what he said, oh, Paul, didn't you? Yeah. These light afflictions. Yeah. You think he got it bad. Yeah. Son, just look to Jesus. Yeah. The author and the finisher of our faith, who endured the cross, despising the shame, has now sat down at the right hand of the Father. How did he take that, Scotty? Because he saw the seed. Right. The outcome. <laughs> How does that like this? It's worth serving Jesus. When we get to heaven... And we finally reach that summit and we look back, Brother Ken, and we say, praise God, our light of affection has worked far more for us. I understand what I went through, what I went through, so God can get glory and somebody else can be strengthened, somebody else can be saved. How to God be the glory? It's good up here. Amen. I stand to our feet. I preached in my heart. Listen tonight, maybe you're bucking against that brokenness. Friend, listen, let God, let God do His work. Let God do His work. Now I'm going to tell you, God's going to make you shine like gold before it's over with. Amen? Every head bowed, every eye closed, somebody come get a song of invitation if you would. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight for the Word of God. And God, I thank you, Lord, for the truths of the unsearchable riches of the Word of God. And God, I pray tonight, may you help this church. Lord, I don't know, Lord, what's in store this week. God, I do know there's a good part that you want from us. And there's a treasure inside of all of us. And God, we won't get, you won't get that treasure unless you break us. And Father, I'll be the first candidate to say, God, if it takes breaking me for you to get glory, God, break me. God, mold and make me in your image so some sinner could get saved. So this revival may not be hindered, but God, just as the Apostle Paul said, I've kept back nothing. Lord, help us make our hearts and every area of our life open and vacant for you to use. Father, through our life, get glory and honor. Father, tonight, may you have mercy upon us. Maybe where we've complained, Maybe we got discomplacent, got discouraged. 
because of the hand of God that maybe was working on our behalf. Lord, we know what the Scripture says. All things, all things work for the good of them that's called according to the purpose. And those that love God and that is appearing. Father, bless this invitation. Bless Brother Pace. Bless the dear pastor. Use this church. God, mold them and make them. Do for them what they cannot do for themselves this week. Get honor and glory. We'll love you for it. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Larry. Yes, amen. You mind God for you.